Good morning. Glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, none of the ages of ages. Amen. Welcome to the podcast. It's very nice out there today. Uh, I see the roads are all wet because the temperatures are up. Uh, isn't this unusual? Um, we have witnessed uh, the thawing of the Arctic. Um, now we're seeing weather uh, in Maine in December that's you can go outside with, with your uh, T-shirt on and not really feel cold. Uh, to me, I, I believe that every um, every few thousand years, I'm not sure exactly how much, but it's my theory, of course, uh, every few thousand years, the <clears throat> Gulf Stream changes course. Um, it appears that uh, the Gulf Stream now is going up the coast, up into Labrador and up into the Arctic. And so, of course, the, uh, the Gulf Stream is being warmed by the tropic, tropical temperatures down there near the equator. Um, well, not really near the equator, but subtropics down, you know, coming out of the Gulf of Mexico. Um, <clears throat> so it's subtropic and uh, it's very warm. And so these warm temperatures uh, and the warm water going up through to Labrador and up into the Arctic Circle is thawing the ice. In Maine, we're having the, we're experiencing uh, the weather that they would normally have in Europe this time of year. Uh, Europe is, for the you know, last few hundred years or, or whatever, is known for mild temperatures. Um, it was such a big difference between Europe and, and the United States that um, when the settlers first came over here, some of them weren't adequately dressed for winter. And uh, a lot of them froze to death uh, because uh, Maine used to get very frigid. And now it's not. I noticed that there are a few years back that there was flowers blooming in February. Who would have thought? Uh, you know, like 10, 20 years ago, who would have thought that you'd see flowers blooming in February in Maine? But it looks like we're getting ready for another mild winter. Um, they keep, I keep hearing these things like, well, they're going to have uh, extra cold winter this year. But I, you know what? I don't see that happening. I'm sorry. Uh, we're getting uh, the weather that no normally uh, Europe gets. So anyway, I'll pick this, link, this guitar up, this nylon string guitar. It's not really a nylon string guitar, as you know. Uh, if you've been um, following the podcast, that uh, the guitar started bellying right here by the bridge. And uh, I want to tell you right now that uh, the, I said uh, it's got a loose brace inside of it. Well, this is not, I don't have, really have the equipment to fix a, the bridge or a, the brace. So I said to my, my friend who was the uh, owner of the music store, I think I'm just going to put nylon strings on her. Um, and that way it will relieve the pressure that's on the bridge. It's a tr tremendous amount of pressure. It's constantly pulling on that bridge. I mean, you, you see, you got 160 pounds. You're like pulling, if you ever tried pulling and opening up a, a bow, uh, like a like a, um, a recurve bow, uh, even a 70-pound recurve bow is virtually, I mean, it's pretty hard for a person to pull back and hold back. Uh, so this thing, can you imagine a 160-pound bow? That's just basically what you got is you got... The strings are attached to the bridge on one end and attached to the, uh, the tuners on the other end of it. And it's just pulling like a bow constantly. So uh, every guitar at some point ends up bellying uh, this type of guitar. Now, you when you have a, a guitar with a floating bridge and a tailpiece, it ends up sagging after a while. And so uh, the reason why that they make um, guitars into arch tops is because uh, it gives it more stability, more strength to hold the, the pressure on the bridge. Either way, there's a lot of force pull, pushed on, pull, pushed and pulled on the top of a guitar. So my step is to my next step is going to be to get a transducer, um, a transducer. Uh, uh, what do you call it? A uh, pickup, because uh, obviously a nylon string is not going to be. Uh, it's not going to work with a magnetic type pickup, which I have right here. Um, let me show it to you. Um, now this thing. Um, inside of it, it's got magnets. And so that when you plug it into the amplifier, uh, the uh, the magnets pick up the vibrations of the metal strings because, you know, they're, they're um, uh, magnetic. And uh, it uh, sends it off to the amplifier, and the amplifier interprets the sounds from the vibrations that are made by that. So a um, little, little information here for you about the way guitars work, the way... Uh, they pick up works on the guitar. Um, so anyway, I'm going to get back into this. Uh, I might try to work a little bit on Bulleria this morning. And I still like to, I'm still working on that, uh, um, what is the name of it? 
must be losing my memory. Um, if there's another one I've been working on, I can't remember the name of it right now. Um, Taranta. I'll get it in a minute. So it, it may be I'm just distracted and not losing my memory at all. So uh, without any further ado. wish everybody take the time to wish everybody out there a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Uh, in the Orthodox Church, uh, we have 12 days of Christmas. And uh, so wife and I came up with this idea. Um, we were going to buy each other 12 gifts. Um, I, I suppose that's where that song, the uh, 12 days of Christmas comes from. Uh, see, back in back a long time ago, uh, parts of the church began to use the Gregor Gregorian calendar which uh, gives us Christmas Day, uh, December 25th. But the old calendar um, has it on the 7th of January. And so between the 25th of December and the 7th of January, it is 12 days. So what we decided to do, I said, hey, honey, I got an idea. Let's buy 12 gifts for each other and put them under the tree. Let's make one gift for the household and the rest personal gifts. And uh, each day, let's open one gift apiece. So sweetie's got something in the freezer. Uh, that, she's, that she really likes. And I told her, uh, um, the first gift I'm going to give you is probably the one in the freezer. So we'll get that out of the way. And uh, But anyway, uh, you want to try something fun. I would say ha celebrate 12 days of Christmas, whether you're Orthodox or not. I mean, just try it. Like um, maybe not this year, but maybe next year. If we're still around, God tarries, uh, the Lord tarries. And uh, we can <clears throat> try to have 12 days of Christmas. Uh, on the first day of Christmas, I don't have a partridge in a pear tree, but I do have something very nice for her in the freezer. So, at any rate, um, listen, um, I want to invite uh, anybody here uh, this watching this program, if you're anywhere near uh, the town of Dexter, Maine, uh, to swing by on Christmas Eve. We're going to have a few prayers, and then we're going to have a meal afterwards where we, in which we break our fast. Um, the time reckons... Um, from sundown at sundown starts the new day so uh in the, in the jewish culture um the sabbath begins on a friday night at sundown and so they early the early church um the first members of the early church were all jewish so they took to the synagogues on on a saturday to uh celebrate the sabbath uh to observe the sabbath and uh abstain from any kind of work on that day. But, however, uh, they were Christians too. So at the sundown, at sundown on a Sabbath day, on Saturday, they would start a Christian liturgy and they would go all night long. Isn't that amazing? Now we get, uh, we get bored if we have to go in church any longer than a half an hour, we, we're fidgeting around and we want to get out of there. Uh, but those people, they went all night long and uh, praised and celebrated the Lord all night. Uh, so the next morning, uh, on a Sunday morning, uh, 
the day that Christ was res uh, had resurrected, um, they would have an agape meal. And, and of course, now Rome began to persecute the Christians, so Christians all had to go underground. They had to hide their identities as being Christian. So in this manner, um, the Christian church was separated from the synagogue. You see, uh, they were being not only sold out by their own fellow countrymen, but they were also being hunted down by the Romans. And so any person who went to the synagogue that um, began a liturgy at sat on Saturday at sundown, they would know they were Christian, so they would be turned in to the authorities. Uh, and back in those days, they were very, uh, they would kill you. I mean, you know, they'd torture you and kill you, feed you to the lions, whatever. So in this manner, the church became separate from the synagogue because you couldn't go to the synagogue and still be identified as a Christian in those days. Of course, once Christianity became legal uh, by Constantine, um, then uh, the church had been separated from the synagogue uh, more than 100 years. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't have the exact date in my mind right this moment when uh, Christianity was legalized in the Roman Empire, but it was a harsh treatment for Christians back in the day. So uh, if you're a Seventh-day Adventist um, and you're going around saying that uh, uh, it's, we're not allowed to have worship on a Sunday, then you're really not, you're not really in, in reality. Um, Christians have always, from the very beginning, had a Sunday worship. Uh, they would depart from the synagogue and observe the Sabbath, and on the Saturday night at sundown, they would go into Christian liturgy, you see? So it's not forbidden, and there's nowhere in the scripture that forbids them from worshiping on a Sunday. Um, in fact, it says the seventh day to keep holy and, and make it a Sabbath. Nowadays, it could be any of the days. Um, St. Paul said that some men hallow um, some days above others, but I hallow every day. So every day we're supposed to be praising and worshiping God. Because you see, uh, what happened on the day of Pentecost was the fulfillment of the prophecy of the prophet Joel, um, th that he would uh, put his rest in you. This is the rest, which is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So through, through baptism, repentance and baptism and chrismation, uh, they were endued with the Holy Spirit from on high. So, glory to God. Um, we're at 11 Church Street. We'll be there at 5 p.m. And on Sunday morning, we'll be there at 11. And then, Sunday evening, we will have uh, this this meal. So, uh, if you want to come, come at 5 p.m. To, to 11 Church Street next to Maine on Sunday. Uh, we will observe the birth of Christ, and then we'll be back in there on a Sunday morning, or on, on a Monday morning. So the bishop decided we were going to have two days of worship on this, this weekend, or on the Christmas weekend. So everybody is welcome. Uh, there will be a meal following on Sunday, this weekend, and next week probably it will be leftovers, because we're probably going to have a whole lot of food left over. So anyway, we'll talk to you later. And glory to Jesus Christ. Have a wonderful day, folks.